Welcome to this video in which we look at and analyze the forces in a bolt cutter. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with a bolt cutter, it's basically, it looks a lot like a large pair of pliers. And uh, I've sort of drawn a schematic representation of one here. Uh, you apply force to the handle, which in turn applies force to these jaws, which are typically some sort of sharpened metal, sharpened hardened metal and you put things like bolts and uh, metal rods and stuff like that between the jaws and with a fairly moderate amount of force on the handles you can generate some pretty impressive forces on the jaws. Uh, so if you'd like to see one in action uh, they've got a nice uh, picture on Wikipedia. Uh, look up bolt cutter and you'll see how it works. Our goal today is to figure out uh, what the forces are in a bolt cutter. If I've got a hundred newtons on the handle, I want to find out what force is applied to this little black thing that I've drawn here. This looks like a rod being cut in half to me. Probably doesn't to anyone else. But I'd like to uh, know what force is applied to this rod. So uh, this bolt cutter has four, actually five moving parts. We've got the handle that's connected to the sort of lever assembly up here. We've got another bottom handle. We've got the upper jaw, I guess, the lower jaw, and then there's a strap here that connects the two jaws together. Um, when we do the analysis, we'll actually only look at the upper half because uh, this is a symmetric tool. Uh, the analysis for the bottom half will be the same as the analysis for the upper half. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we probably need to do is um, give each of the joints letters because we're going to uh, need to talk about them. So we'll call this joint A, this joint up here B, the point where this uh, strap is connected, we'll call that C, and the point where our object that's being squashed is uh, located, we'll call that D. And we'll begin, well, we'll need to do a free body diagram of the upper jaw and a free body diagram of the upper arm. So we'll just begin with that. Um, so I've drawn here a free body diagram of the upper jaw. Uh, this point here corresponds to B. This is C and then one centimeter in this is D. So we will neglect the weight of the components of the bolt cutter. Um, turns out that's not really um, it doesn't weigh, these don't weigh enough relative to the forces we're generating to be significant. Okay, so um, we need to represent both an X and a Y component of the force at B. Uh, this is essentially a hinge or a pin joint. At C, we normally would have to represent uh, both the X and Y component, but if we go back to the picture of the whole bolt cutter, you can see here that I have uh, this point and this point connected by the strap. This is a two force member and so the only direction that the force can be applied uh, to these two points is in the same direction as the strap. So at pin or at uh, joint C I only have a force that looks like this. Uh, let's start labeling these F, B, Y F, B, X, and F, C, Y. And then I also have the force that's applied by the object being squashed against the blade, and we'll call this F, D, Y. Okay, so, and we'll assume that there's no friction between the blade and this object, so um, the object is exerting a force perpendicular to the edge of the blade. Okay, so um, we can now analyze this, or at least start to analyze this. We can say the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. The only, su the only force in the x direction is FBx, so that tells us that the force FBx is zero. We can then say uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. 
that will tell us FBY plus FCY plus FDY, this is equal to zero. And right now we don't have any further information that will allow us to uh, solve for anything. Uh, we can then say that the sum of the moments about an arbitrary point, and in this case let's choose the point C, is equal to zero. So basically we have FBX is equal to zero, so it's not going to create any moment about C. We have FBY going up and working through a moment arm of six centimeters. So we'll have um, a clockwise moment, which means that we'll have my, it's negative, so we'll have minus FBY times six centimeters. And then we'll have FDY, which is going up, working through a one centimeter moment arm, and it's going counterclockwise, so it will be positive. So this tells us FDY times one centimeter, and that's equal to zero. Okay, again, we really don't uh, have enough to solve uh, this e set of equations. We have uh, three unknowns and two equations, so we're not in a point to solve it yet. But uh, rather than worry about that now, we'll go on and look at the free body diagram of the handle. So um, given our lettering scheme, this is point A and this is point B. We know that um, because uh, we have the same reaction force at this point as we do here, uh, the force of the handle acting on the blade we've represented this way, uh, up and to the right, which means that the force of the blade acting on the handle will be in the opposite direction, which would be down and to the left. So it'll have the same magnitude, FBY and F bx, and uh, we'll also have then a force at A, FAY, and FAX, and then we've got our force here of 100 newtons. Okay, so um, let's see, we can sum the forces in the, uh, I'll let sum the forces in the x direction for the handle first. So the forces in the x direction are FBX and FAX. So we have FAX minus FBX is equal to zero. But since we found up here that FBX is equal to zero, this tells us that FAX is also equal to zero. Okay, next let's find the moments about the point A. And so these will be zero. So about the point A, um, I have a hundred Newton force going down with a moment arm of 60 centimeters, and this is organized in such a way that it will try to rotate the handle counterclockwise, so it will be positive. So I have 100 newtons times 60 centimeters. Uh, the force at A does not contribute to the moment at A. And at B, I've d just discovered that, well, I already knew that FBX is zero, so I'll have a force FBY going down with a moment arm of one centimeter. So this will be minus, and it's going clockwise, so it'll be negative minus FBY times one centimeter is equal to zero. And uh, from this then, we can solve for FBY. It's going to be 100 newtons times 60 centimeters 
over one centimeter, which turns out to be 6,000 newtons. Okay, so we're making progress here. And finally then, um, we can find out what FAY is by summing everything in the Y direction. The colors are getting uglier as I run out of them. Summation of F of Y is equal to zero. Well, in the Y direction, I have F A Y uh, going up minus the 100 Newton force. This guy out here going down minus F B Y. And so when I solve this for F A Y, I get F A Y is going to be F B Y, which is 6,000 Newtons plus 100 Newtons. So FBY is 6,100 newtons. Or I'm sorry, FAY, this guy here, is 6,100 newtons. So that means that this handle is going to uh, apply a force of 6,100 newtons to the handle below. And again, since we have symmetry, everything on the, um, on the handle and the jaw below will look like um, uh, what we're doing now, except that the Y directions will be reversed. So let's see, I think uh, we're close. If we go back up to this equation that we got up here by summing the moments of the jaw about C, we can solve this for F dy being equal to um, F by times six centimeters over one centimeter. And we know that FBY is 6,000 newtons. So this is going to be 6,000 times 6, which if I, oh, let's see, we'll write it down here really small, 36,000 newtons. So the force that our jaw is applying to this object that's being squished is 36,000 newtons. Uh, so we've uh, amplified the force on the handle by what, um, 360, 360 times. So that's quite a force amplification. And finally, for those of you who are designing such a thing, we still need to find FCY. And let's see, FCY we can get from this equation now. And I'm pretty much out of time, so I'm not going to actually write it out, but I'll leave it as an exercise for you to solve or to find my mistake. Uh, I get FCY is 42,000 newtons. Okay. So this completes our analysis of the forces inside a uh, bolt cutter. And you'll notice that um, if you've ever used one of these bolt cutters, uh, the reason we can generate such large forces at the jaw is that um, we are moving the handles great distances in order to get this jaw to move maybe a quarter of an inch. So um, we might be moving this into the handle uh, two feet um, in order to get this jaw to move a quarter of an inch, which is where the force uh, multiplication or force amplification comes in. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.